my pretties, it's Queen of Lions here. Today I'm going to be talking about this one movie that I've been... Oh boy, I've been meaning to do a review on this movie for quite some time now. So, um, with that being said, I am going to be reviewing this movie, which is a neon, neon western comedy drama film by Andrew Davis and written by Louis, Louis Char, based on his novel by the same name, Holes. Yeah, the whole um, book came out in 1998. This movie came out in 2003. It stars Sigourney Weaver, John Volight, um, Patricia Equette, um, Tim Blake Nelson, Shia LaBeouf, and many other individuals, which, I mean, I could keep listing them, but it would just be very long. So, yeah, this is based on the Holes book, and I did notice a few differences because the plot of the Holes book it's pretty much the same, but however, though, um, there's a few, um, things I did know, which is, you know, the same thing, like, Stanley being, um, well, um, fat and all, and I mean, there is a couple differences that we do know, like, we do have, you know, know more about the characters and, you know, town of, you know, Green, Green Lake and etc., so, I mean, yeah, I guess with that being the case and that being said, let's get started um, with this um, movie. I'm basically going to go through the plot of the movie for those who haven't watched the movie in like a really long time or for those who've never seen it and for those who want a refresher on what this is about. So I am going to go on with um, the whole thing and um, go from there. So, with that being the case, that being said, let's begin. So, yeah. So, basically, this it takes place in Texas, where the Yelnats family have been cursed by to be unlucky, which they blame their ancestors, Elliot Yelnats' failure, to keep a promise to the fortune teller, Madame Zeroni, over a century earlier in Lafia. One day, when Stanley Yelnats the fourth is walking home, he is, you know, accused and convicted of stealing a pair of sneakers, that were donated to charity by a baseball player called Clyde Livingston, also known as Sweet Feet. But he gets sentenced to 18 months at Camp Green Lake, a juvenile detention camp in Lou for jail time. So when he arrives at the camp, it's pretty much dried up, run by a warden, Louise Walker, who is played by Sigourney Weaver. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Sigourney Weaver when it comes to her movies. Like, she's been an alien... Movies. I mean, I haven't watched the Alien movies. Well, maybe I probably did, but I don't remember because it's been quite a couple years since I've watched them, to be honest. But when it comes to the fact that she was in this movie, I honestly really was like, oh my god, I fell in love with this movie. I mean, I mean, I watched it when I was a kid in school. I'm sure most kids who've read the book in school probably have watched the movie. I mean, I've talked to so many people that have read the book and watched the movie. They said they prefer the movie prefer than the book. <laughs> I mean, I saw this when I was a kid, so it's actually one of my childhood favorites. So basically, she Louise Walker, the warden, has an assistant named Mr. Sir and a camp counselor, Dr. Pedensky. The prisoners who are known by their nicknames, including Zero, Zigzag, Armpit, Squid, X-Ray, and Magnet, each spend their day digging holes in the desert as they may earn a day off if only the inmates find anything interesting. However, one night when Mr. Sir rescues Stanley from a yellow-spotted lizard, which he warns Stanley that they're aggressive, venomous, and lethal, so when they find a golden lipstick tube, initial KB, a.k.a. Um, Kate Barlow, Stanley is accepted into the group and is given a nickname, Caveman, when he found the fossil. So after taking the blame for Magnet stealing of Mr. Sir's sunflower seeds, Stanley gets taken to the Warren's house where the old wanted posters and newspapers led him to realize that KB stands for Catherine Kissing Kate Barlow. Now, the school teacher who turned out to be an outlaw from the past, which um, Louise asks Stanley to grab her a box of nail polish and mentions that it contains rattlesnake venom. So after he and Mr. Sir explain what happened with the sunflower seeds, of course, Louise decides to injure Mr. Sir and allows Stanley to return to his hole. So the Camp Green Lake's history is revealed to be a series of flashbacks throughout the movie. 
Murphy as flourishing lakeside community in the 19th century. Barlow was in a love love triangle with the wealthy Charles Troutwalker, which turns out to be the uh, grandfather of the Wharton, which is revealed later on in the movie. I did not even know that until I watched the movie. Well, maybe I did know about it when I was younger, but didn't really know really much about it when I was younger when I saw this movie for the first time because I had to rewatch this at least two or three more times and then I finally understood, which Kate Barlow rejects and an African-American onion seller named Sam who Kate Barlow loves, the walker who is jealous, well, Trout Walker, the town citizens burn down the schoolhouse and kill Sam after, you know, in retaliation. Barlow kills the local sheriff, who basically ignore her pleas to help and becomes the outlaw by hunting down the walker's men. At one point, she steals a chest of gold from Stanley Yelnats, Nat Sr., a.k.a. Elia's son, 20 years later, they're now bankrupt, and the walkers track down Barlow to tell her to hand over the treasure. But when Barlow refuses to tell them to dig for the treasure, Barlow dies from a lizard bite, and the walkers are set to dig for the treasure. So now it takes place in the present, where Pedensky mocks Zero, whose name's actually Hector Zeroni. It later hits Pedensky with a shovel and runs off. After some debilitation. Deba- Stanley searches for Hector and the pair have difficulty surviving the desert without water. Eventually, Stanley carries the now ill Hector up the mountains. They find a windfield of onions and a source of water, helping them to regain strength at the same time. So Stanley unknowingly fulfills his ancestor's promise to the fortune teller and breaks the curse. While camping on the mountain, Hector tells Stanley that he stole Livingston's sneakers and threw them over the bridge to evade the police, only for them to advertently hit Stanley's head. So when they return to the camp, Stanley and Hector investigate the hole where Stanley found the lipstick and discovers a chest before they are discovered by the warden, Mr. Sir, and Pedensky. They soon realize that Walker, who is Trout's granddaughter, is using the inmates to search for Kate Barlow's treasure. So the adults are unable to steal the chest from the boys as the hole was swarmed with lizards, Passive to Stanley and Hector, due to the onions they ate earlier, they were not bitten. So the adults decide to wait till the morning. When the lizards will retreat in the shade, when the next morning the attorney general and Stanley's lawyer arrive, accompanied by the Texas Rangers, in the chest Stanley found is discovered to have belonged to his namesake great-grandfather, Walker and Mr. Sir, who are revealed to be patrolled criminal named Marison Salvino and Pedensky, who is a criminal impersonating a doctor. They get arrested. However, Stanley and Zero are revealed are released and it rains in Greenlight for the first time in like over a thousand, a hundred years. Sorry, not a thousand, a hundred. A hundred! <laughs> oh, man. So the Yelnets family then claims the ownership of the chest, which contains the jewels, deeds, and the promissory notes They are to share with Hector, who uses it to hire a private investigator to locate his missing mother. So both families have a life of their financial ease as neighbors, and thus how the movie ends. What a great story. I'm definitely going to say this was actually a really good concept. Like, it actually has a really, really, it's a really good concept in the movie, like, especially when I saw it when I was younger. I really thought this was nice. I really liked them. So I could definitely say... It's definitely really, um, it's pretty good, actually. I mean, I really personally thought it was nice. So, the difference from the book and the film are that, you know, in the book, it states that Stanley is very fat, but it doesn't tell you any, and it tells you nothing about him in the film about being bullied about his weight. However, another difference I did see is that at the end of the film, it starts to rain very heavily, but in the book, it does not happen which is pretty surprising to be completely honest because the major um, message of the whole book it includes the consequences of choices resulting from the fate and destiny and the importance of friendship, which is pretty neat. So, I guess with that being said, I think we should get started on... Um, yeah. 
So I could definitely say that right now. This is just kind of, nah, um, sorry about that. I'm just messaging someone right now. Yeah. So, okay. So I really have to say I read the book. The book's pretty good. I mean, I recommend the book. It's pretty neat. I did spot a few um, changes in the book and movie, but here's the whole thing. In the book, Trout is called Trout because his feet smell like fish and his real name is Charles, but it's not really mentioned in the film. When Elliot's wife Sarah Miller appears in the book, but she's not seen in the movie. However, in the book, Mr. Sir's backstory is not really revealed in great detail. However, it is released in the um, in the movie. It's revealed that he's a patrol criminal who's committed a crime in El Paso in Texas. So, with that being case and that being said, Kate is with Sam when he gets shot on his boat in the book and Kate's on the side of the lake and sees Sam being shot in the distance. I'm surprised that they were able to get away with that, you know, in such a bit movie but I mean this movie's kind of like a dark one but you know it's pretty something there's a lot of differences when it comes to well the whole thing so I guess so that being the case and that being said um a really really amazing thing that I really have to say is that you know in the book Kate Barlow Kate Barlow dies Dies. Trout Walker first makes her walk around the dry lake bed, burning her feet to go through the torture. And in the book, she's also been unintentionally bitten by the ankle by a yellow spotted lizard. But in the movie, she immediately kills herself and intentionally lets it bite on the arm instead of the other way around. So, with that being the case, I mean, this book definitely is like a really good one to check out, especially if you're... If you're, like, a young, you know, reader like I am. Like, I mean, I'm practicing my reading on stories, too. I mean, I really personally like it. So, however, the movie Holes was filmed in California in the summer of 2002 and was produced with a budget of $20 million. When looking for a child actor to play the roles of Stanley Yell next, director Andrew Davis asks for a young actor like a young Tom Hanks. Shia LaBeouf, who ended up receiving the role just read the film's script before reading the original novel. In the original book, Stanley is, you know, depicted as being obese, shedding considerable amounts of weight, and as the books progress, the filmmakers decide to drop the aspect of the movie of Stanley being overweight, as they believe it would have been too difficult to convincingly portray the lost weight in a live-action movie. So the film was shot in several locations, including Ridge Crescent, California, Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf was simultaneously doing work for the Disney Channel, you know, even Stevens, which I've never heard of, and will work on the role of the film after he's done filming on that. So to show the kids that he, the holes have been dug gradually throughout the day, different phases were used. Like each time the seven holes were given different levels of deepness. For the yellow spotted lizards, they got at least 14 bearded the dragons were used, which four of them were used as the main parts, and the rest were just used as a background as atmosphere lizards. So this one was filmed, was released um, theoretically US, in the U.S. on April 18th of 2003, and then it was released on DVD and VHS in September, and I definitely have to say, the soundtrack was absolutely amazing. It's really good and it's definitely got a really good concept for the movie it does have a lot of music really i recommend you watch this movie if you haven't it's it's really recommended i mean if you're if you're a fan of holes i recommend you watch this movie i mean i there is a um, full movie of it on youtube so you guys can go watch the movie on youtube if you want i mean you know, that's up to you. If you want to watch it, that's perfectly fine. I do have it on DVD. I mean, I watched it, I think, kind of last year, not last year, but like two years ago. It's still a pretty good movie. I recommend it. But yeah, I recommend you read the book first if you've not seen the movie, because you will definitely see there's a difference between the book and the movie. Like, I noticed a lot of differences, but I had to rewatch the movie again. So I guess with that being said, 
that's pretty much all I have to really say I have to say about this. Pretty good book. I mean, the book is good. The movie's awesome. Definitely a lot of time and effort into it. And I definitely can see that this one honestly had a great concept for what the story really is. It does have really good actors. I mean, the actors did a great job. I really have to say, I did really like the actors. And I still do. They actually did pretty good. So, I guess with that being the case and with that being said, I'm just going to sit here and say, um, yeah, that's all I really have to say. I mean, I recommend you read the book. I mean, I also recommend watching the movie if you haven't. So, with that being said, with that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say, what did you guys personally think of the movie? Did you like the movie? Did you like the book? What are you guys' thoughts on it? Leave my your thoughts down in the comments below because I would like to personally think of it. I mean, I do apologize for keeping this on the back burner for like two years. I was originally going to start off with this episode when I start off Shadows and Pretties back in 2020. But I decided to do The Wizard of Oz because it would kind of make more sense that, you know, I'm more of a Wizard of Oz fanatic. But I still have, you know, heart of this movie. So with that being the case, what did you guys think? Um, if you like the movie, that's cool. If you don't like it, that's fine. If you like the book, that's cool. I respect your opinion regardless. But with that being said and that being the case, I'm going to sit here and say, what do you guys think? Feel free to leave me your thoughts down in the comments below. Feel free to express your opinion. Seeing that most of you guys are respectful, I don't have any problems with you disagreeing with me. So, yeah, what did you guys think? Um, leave me what your thoughts in the comments below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you're new to my channel, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. And as always, I'll be seeing you all in the next video. I'm not sure when the never episode will be. I'm sorry I've been kind of, you know, the lack of, you know, pre-recording these episodes. I just haven't had motivation. But I am trying to get it somewhat back so I can do these again. I just got, you know, other stories I want to try and do. So, yeah, please bear with me there. But anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.